it looks like the lecture is just starting. Gabriel decides to record the session. Voodoo is the tribal religion of Africa. But the name Voodoo is actually a banner heading under which resides an entire body of distinct tribal belief systems. The word Voodoo may sound familiar to you. What is known in the States as Voodoo is actually an amalgamation of African religious systems, Voodoo, and European religions, primarily Catholicism. All of the subcults of African Voodoo have certain things in common. The most important is the worship of a pantheon of spirits instead of the single deity that the Christian and Muslim systems had. Some of these spirits are elementals. Some relate to specific tasks or places. Some represent important tribal leaders who have died. This spirit worship is what makes Voodoo so easily adaptable. With all those spirits, it's no problem to add a few more. Say, for example, the Virgin Mary. At the height of tribal Africa, warfare was common. The one tribe would conquer another, and the Loa, important in the conqueror's tribal system, would be adopted readily into the conquered tribe's Loa pantheon. In this way, many of the Voodoo cults spread and mingled throughout tribal Africa, enriching the belief system and causing innumerable offshoots. The basis for the Voodoo religion seems to be as old as man himself. It has much in common with many early pagan practices. Animal totems, sympathetic magic, elemental spirits in the trees, the heavens, the bodies of the sick. Africa is believed by many to be the cradle of the human race. Some of the Voodoo Loa may be as old as the Garden of Eden itself. We still can't explain some of the real power of these primal religions. And note, I said primal, not primitive. There are African Bokors who baffle our scientists with their supernatural powers. Now, let's discuss the elements of Voodoo. <sighs> Fascinating guy. In Voodoo, the spirits are called the Loa. During a Voodoo ceremony, celebrants are possessed by the Loa. This is called being ridden. The human worshiper is seen as a horse, and the Loa as the divine horseman. A person being ridden by a Loa takes on the characteristics of that spirit and becomes, in effect, merely a vessel for the more powerful entity. Some of the older, original Africa Loa include Dambala, the great serpent god, is really the mistress of love. Baba Nebo, or Gede, the Lord of Death. Agwe, the spirit of water. Ligma, spirit of the crossroads. And the cruelest and most dangerous, Bogun Badagri, the Lord of Destruction. Ugh. Oh, I gotta get more sleep at night. A uh, tribe-specific loa can have as much or more power as the more widely worshipped loa. For instance, a particular tribe might revere highly the loa of an ancestor who was a legendary hunter or politician. Voodoo temples are called Haunfors. Their priests, Hangun or Bokors. Their priestesses, Mama Loa. In a Voodoo Haunfor, there's a ritual circle marked by a center pole called a poto -mitan. The ritual circle is prepared with a bebe, a pattern of symbols. Each tribe's bebe is slightly different, consisting of complex symbols that identify their special law. During ritual conclaves, initiates dance under the supervision of a bokor and a mamaloa. The use of totems or animal masks and markings was not uncommon in the original African ceremonies. Now though, all but the oldest sects have abandoned this practice. Ritual objects used during the conclaves include the ritual gourd or asson, the ritual knife or kubasa. That knife gives me the chills. The Ritual Whip, or Fwet Kash. 
and the ritual coffin or seke madule. These items are often optional, called for by the Mama Loa for specific magical rituals. The Mama Loa is the most powerful figure in any Voodoo sect. Voodoo is a truly matriarchal system. Even the Bokor knows his power is limited. Mama Loa is the supreme woman. She butterflies. Fireflies. Firelight. Gabriel? Mm, what? I can't see. Gabriel! Get in! Yeah, it's too small for me. You must get in, Gabriel. It's not mine. Too small. Hide, Gabriel. Hide! No! No! Let me out! Help! Young man. The lecture is over. Oh my god, sorry. Are you a student? No. My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Well, you have walked into my private office, Mr. Knight. I hope you have something worthwhile to do here. If you figure it out, let me know. Is there anything you can tell me about the voodoo aspects of this photograph? Mm, this is serious voodoo ritual. Nasty stuff. In what way? Let's see. I can't make out much detail from this photograph. Except for the corpse, of course. But the wound, the face, and what little I can see of the ritual paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of certain black voodoo and practices. Very rare. I've never witnessed them myself, you understand? Really? Interesting. Thanks. Can you tell me anything about this pattern? Wow. Interesting. Very interesting. Mind if I copy this? Be my guest. Great. I'll be right back. Here you go. You know, this is a fascinating baby. You must tell me all about its origin. Actually, I was hoping you'd tell me. Can you figure out anything about it from the symbols? Well, some. That's why I wanted a copy. I want to research the design myself. Each of the symbols in the baby represents something. A loa, a place. Where did you get this? Have you heard of the voodoo murders? No, you're kidding. Really? Then the voodoo is authentic. The newspapers are wrong. Boy, are they wrong. You think this veve is authentic, then? Authentic? Mr. Knight, that's like asking if the Mona Lisa is a painting. Tell you what, I'll uh, look into these symbols myself and see what I can learn about the sect that made this. I'll give you a call when I have more information. Uh, you are associated with the police, aren't you? Absolutely. But I'm, uh, undercover. You can contact me at the St. George's Bookshop in the quarter. All right. Now, I'd like to get started on this, if you don't mind. Mind if I pick your brain? Not if it will get you out of my office. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Hmm, just what I read in the papers until you showed me that baby. I wasn't interested before, but now... Yes, I'd like to figure out where these people come from, and what they're up to. 
They are obviously some very frightening and deadly serious voodoo. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I find it interesting to see the occasional fragment of voodoo practices in the everyday culture of New Orleans. What else can you tell me about New Orleans? Uh, the Catholic Church has always dominated in New Orleans, and its imagery, in turn, has dominated New Orleans voodoo. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? It's June 23rd, the feast day of St. John the Baptist. But June 23rd has been a sacred day since the earliest times. Ancient sun worshippers used to roll a flaming wheel down a hill to celebrate the sun's descent on that day. A burning wheel? Huh. Do you have any idea what Cabri Saint Cœur means? Cabri Saint Cœur? Yes, I do. It's a Haitian term, I believe. It's French, and literally translates as goat without horns. As in a female goat? No, as in a human sacrifice. Sacrifices in voodoo are usually of the animal variety. Chickens, wolves, goats. If the gods demand a goat without horns, it means a human being. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? While I find the colloquial bastardizations of voodoo somewhat interesting from a surely intellectual point of view, there's not a lot of relation between people like Laveau and true voodoo practices. Tell me what you mean by black voodoo. Well, like any religion, the beliefs can tend toward positive or negative ends. Can be used for good or evil. Christianity, for example, has its doppelganger, Satanism. Any time you attempt to set up an icon to explain evil, you invite some warped mind to worship it. The same is true of voodoo. There are those who are drawn by and desire personal power from the darker, bloodier lower. Tell me about yourself. All right, Mr. Knight, I'm 35, a fully tenured professor at this university as well as a fellow at Cambridge. My doctorate was obtained at Syracuse. Yes, Syracuse, in religious studies. I'm an agnostic, but I find human belief systems fascinating. I specialize in African religions because I grew up there. My father was a Protestant missionary. And I am heterosexual when I practice sex at all, which isn't very often. Any other questions? Uh, no. Fine. Tell me more about human sacrifice. It's, uh, very rare. Most Pudun practices do not include human sacrifice as a matter of record, but it is theoretically possible if that the gods demand. For example, one of the chants I had translated for me from a Haitian ritual went like this. Mistress Azuli, come and aid us. If a cock is demanded, we will give it. If a bull will suffice, behold it. But if a goat without horns is required for sacrifice, oh where will we find one? Azuli is the gentlest of Loa, so they call on her for mercy. But I have seen grown and powerful Hungan tremble before a possession by one of the more violent Loa, such as Akaniru. Clearly, they are afraid that something of the sort will be ordered, or that the Loa will simply take it for themselves. I'll be going. Good day, Mr. Knight.